Hi, hello, welcome back to another video. So this job be quite tricky, but it should be quite interesting. These are the jobs I love, the ones where you have to really think about how to get the job done. So this is a packer off the back of a cultivator, and then they have self-lining bearings that go on the end, and that's what the shaft is supposed to look like. But then when you come down this end and look at this shaft, that is not supposed to be what it looks like. So the bearing is disintegrated and obviously it's ruined the shaft and then the farmer has built it back up just to get them going just so they can get what they needed to get done done so now they brought it to me and they want me to sort this out so i don't want to chop that out because i don't know how it's fastened in you know it might just be a short stub shaft maybe it goes to there or it might be a shaft all the way through so i don't want to start gouging it out and realize it's one big long shaft the job will get complicated if it is. So what I'm going to do is machine it in situ. So I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make an adapter for my portable line boring machine so I can mount it on like you would do normally if you're line boring something. And I'm going to make a tool that will cut externally rather than internally. So you know I'll have a tool that will go all the way around, cut off the old weld and I'll build it back up and then machine it back down again. So the first job before I do anything is I'll have to make the tool in that I need to do the job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, a, cut out a leg like this that'll be 150mm long with a 40mm hole through it so that'll clamp onto the end of like the bar that I use well a short bit of 40mm bar that'll fit in the line boring machine and then I'll make a bit of round bar that comes off this that'll hold the lathe tool like well the same type of tools that you use for line boring. What I'm going to do first is cut this bit out. So I've got a pattern drawn I'm going to profile that out of a 40mm plate and then do all the machining on it. Well, I'm probably going to, just going to use 30mm actually because I've already got some 30mm there. Should be thick enough. So that's that bit of plate cut out now. So I think I'm going to put in a milling machine. I'm going to mill this side flat. I think same on that side. And then I might face, face it off as well on both sides.
So I've got all four sides faced off now and I've used the edge finder to find that edge. I measured that with the, uh, with the verniers. So now I've divided that in two so I'm going to come across to find the middle of that. Then drill a hole through it and drill and ream it out 40 mil. So I've got a 38 mil hole drilled through there now and I need to go through the reamer but there isn't enough space to get the reamer in so what I'm going to have to do I think is take them parallels out and put them on some smaller ones sit this on some smaller parallel blocks and then I should have enough room then I'll have to uh, bring it out of the way so I can take the drill out put the reamer in and then bring it back into line and ream it through So that's that reaming up to 40 mil now. So the next job is I want a 16 mil slot milling down there. Right, so we're set up for milling the slot now, but um, this milling machine only has one stop. It's supposed to have two, but there's one missing. You have to set how long you want to mill for. So what I'm going to do, I think, is just go straight through first at one end of the slot, come to the other end, go straight through then it should be easier for me to know where I'm stopping and starting.
So I've got the slot milled, I've turned it on its side. What I was originally going to do was, what I was thinking I was going to do is put a bolt through that way. Obviously there's not enough metal there, so I'm going to drill down here, um, tap it, so it's like an M12 bolt will go in there, and then I'll have to slip through there, and then that'll be the clamp that clamps it onto the, onto the bar. So I've got a bit milled out for the head of the bolt. So that'll sit in there, that's obviously not the bolt, but it's not long enough. Just using that as an example. So I've got a bit milled out there and I've got like a centre hole started with an end mill. Now I need to drill it out at 10.2. What annoys me about with this mill is it's just not big enough. Right, I can't fit, can't fit that in. There's not enough room. Now I'll have to take this vice out, I'll take it off the mill, put it on the pillar drill and drill it through on the pillar drill. So I've got that drilled and tapped now. So the last job I need to do is put a slit through there. The only way I've got to do that is with a slitting disc in the grinder because I haven't got any other way of doing it. Right, so that is that bit finished. So that'll clamp onto the end of the bar like that. Not this bar, I'll, obviously I'll make a shorter bar. Um, then that'll nip onto there. Need longer bolt as well, that's just short bolt. But whether it'll nip tight enough just with the bolt or whether it'll need a keyway cutting into it, I'm not sure yet, but I have the ability to, to be able to cut the keyway in, in the shaft and the hole, so it's not a problem. But for now that's that bit done so I'm going to start on this bit now so what I'm going to do what I'm going to do is drill it out and tap the end with an M16 bolt and then put it in the mill and slot it make a slot on the end so it'll slot into there like that and then I'll have to drill a hole for the tool 12 mil hole and then a grub screw side same as like what line bar in bar has and I'll be able to slide that up and down where I need it and also slide the tool in and out.
So that's that end uh, drilled and tapped out to 16 mil. So I'm going to put it in the milling machine now and mill the top off. I have to turn it over and then mill the other side off. So then I'm left with a slot. Right, so I've got that set up in the milling machine. Got it clamped down. I've got the angle plate on to act as a stop. So once I've cut this side and when I turn it over, I know that it's going to be in exactly the same place again. So there's nine and a half mil to take off and I'll do that in two cuts. Right, so that's the first top cut done. So I'll turn it over now and do the same at the other side. Right, so I've got it turned the other way up, but I don't really have any way of knowing whether I'm properly flat or not, because I don't have any gauge blocks or whatever you'd use, whatever you'd use to do this. So I'm just using a file and two bits of shim steel. Well, two bits of like thin steel. It's, well, it's like packing band. Um, I'm just sort of getting it as near as I can. I think that'll be near enough. I'm sort of guessing, but yeah, I think that'll do. So the way I'm finding the top is I'm just sitting the tooling onto it, and then you can feel on the wheel the slack there. So I'm just taking it up to that top bit of the slack. So it's just to say touching it, locking that off. using my dial to know to know how much I'm taking off. Right, so that now fits in there. Like that. So I can move that up and down where I need it. So what I need to do now is drill a hole through there, 12 mil hole for me, tool, and then a hole inside for the grub screw. So I got this back on the mill again. I've squared that up and there to make sure that's 90 degrees. Drilled a little starting hole, a little centre hole. And then I'll drill that through the 12 mil now. So that's that drilled through now, the tool through. Uh, I made a little mistake when I drilled the hole. I picked the wrong drill up and I drilled it out too big, so I've had to drill the other side out and tap that. So we'll uh, drop that off now, about 100 mil long. And then I'll put it back in the lathe, just turn a bit of chamfer on the end, flatten it off, and then that's that bit should be done. Right, so I'm going to run the bearings back to back like that on this plate, these bearing housings. Um, so obviously the line bar will clamp on this side, and then on the other side, that will be right tight up again the bearings. So 
should minimise any deflection in the bar. Obviously this bar's too long, so now what I'm going to do is make a new bar, a shorter one. So I'll have to machine one end down to 19mm and then mill some flats on it so I can put it in the drive on the uh, line borer. And then I'll just put a chamfer on the other end and then that bit will clamp onto it. So that is it all made up how it's going to be now. So I've got that end turned down, flats milled onto it. So then that'll go through them two bearings like that and then the cutter on that end. So I've been thinking which is going to be the best way to line everything up. But because it's got a hole in the middle that's tapped, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that, that's a bolt, I've chopped the end off. So I'm going to wind that in there and I've made this pin with the hole in the end the same size as that. And then the outside diameter is the same size as the bearings on my bearing housing. So if I wind that in there, and then slide that onto the end and then that should align my bearing where I need it. Right, so that is welded on there now. I'm not quite sure whether it'll be rigid enough because when you when you knock it like that, you can feel it ringing. So I might have to just put some more braces in from there onto there, I think. Otherwise, I think it'll chatter. I've got some extra bits welded across there. And then I've welded a bit inside the box just to like, try and bridge it a bit, but you can still sort of feel it ringing a little bit, but anyway, we'll see how we get on.
Right, so that is it all mounted on. So if you haven't seen this machine before, this is a line bar that I made. So it's all on, goes round. Don't really know how fast I need to have it going. Right, so I think we should be ready for a go. I've just set the tool so it should just take a, a real light skim off when it gets to that bit of a lump there. And then obviously we'll keep moving the tool in until we get it all round again. Obviously, I don't think I'll be able to take it all off because there won't be much left. But anyway, we'll take it back down till it's round and then build it back up again, I think. So that's the first cut done and that worked very well um, you can see it's, it's taken another cut when I drove it back over, but yeah overall it's it's done a nice cut is that so we'll move the tool on a bit and then do it again so I've just got the dial gauge set up there on the back of the tool so I can move it on and I don't really need the dial gauge at the moment but I just thought I'd try I think I'll move it on Two mil, so it's maybe so it's doing two mil depth of cut. See how it see how it handles that. Right, so that's the second cut done. It wasn't quite as keen on taking two mil depth of cut. Um, I think what I need to do is make some bigger, some longer and fatter stands, because it's just not quite rigid enough. I suppose it's asking a lot for three M16 bolts. So yeah, next time I'll make some fatter ones of them. But, you know, I've done it, moved it on one mil again. So one mil depth of cut. I don't really know how much I need to take off. Ideally, I need to take it all off, but if I do that, there'll be not much left. So I'll see what it looks like after this cut. So I think I've taken enough off there now, it's down to 40 mil. There's one or two spots of porosity. I might have to dig them out with a die grinder, but it shouldn't be a problem. So I think I'll take this off, I'll take the bar out, take this off, and then I don't think I'll need to take the bearings off, I can leave them on. I'll get in there, build it back up with weld. And I'll grind them bits down. It's just a shame about that bit, but I'll be able to build that bit back up. So yeah, I'll do that.
Right, so I've been around that with three runs of weld now, three layers of weld. So it should be plenty there to machine back down to 50 mil. So I just have to wait for it to cool down again now. So I'm just looking at this, there's a stop. So I could set it up so it'd only cut to a certain depth and then stop, which would be useful for on there because it needs a, needs a step on the shaft. But I haven't got around to, to rigging it up yet. So that's first cut done, it's not really taken much off, so I'm going to move it in 2 mil again. Right, so we've got one more cut to do, half a mil over final diameter. Not quite happy with the cut quality, it's a bit rough, but I'm not sure why that is. Right, so that is that done. So it's not perfect, there's a few imperfections in the end, but it measures. Measures sort of bang on where I want it. 50 mil. So it measures about bang on what we want. So there's 50 mil bearing to go on it. So yeah, that's, that's that done. So there's definitely some improvements I can make for next time. I think I need to make some longer and heavier duty stands because they're just they're not rigid enough. And I think maybe the tool height was slightly wrong. So whether I should offset, drill a new hole slightly offset just to get the tool slightly lower. That one's bang in the middle. So I might experiment with that next time. Yeah, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how that's gone. Um, it's another string to my bow. And 
I don't know anyone else in my area that would have been able to machine that in situ so you know hopefully it should open up some more job options and make my life easier for other jobs rather than having to cut it out you know you can just machine it where it is so yeah thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time